Ladies and gentlemen, an air of witchcraft settles over our This Is Your Life stage. Your host, Ralph Edwards, appears with tonight's honored subject, the Dean of the World's Master Magicians, the one and only Blackstone. Please don't make yourself disappear, Blackstone, because we want you to say hello to your young friend, Aubrey, one of the greatest manipulators and sleight of hand artists in the world today. Aubrey's hands will be seen often as your story unfolds. Yes, the spooky number 13 figures in your destiny as we begin your story in Chicago, where your mother, Barbara Elizabeth, is a milliner by trade, and your father, Alfred, is a hat. Because the great turning point of your life comes when you're 13. The first time I see this picture, you Yes. And you sell newspapers to get the money to go to the McVickers Theater to see who? Keller. Yes. Harry Keller, leading magician. And the wonder and mystery of that performance of magic so stirs you, you know that very day, all you want from life is to be a great magician. You tell your parents all about it, and uh, you're a lucky boy, because your father is all for it and encourages your enthusiasm. Would you like to sit down here, Mr. Blackstone? With books from the library, you start to study the ancient art of trick, illusion, which go back to Egyptian time. Finishing school, you work as a cabinet maker and as a pattern maker for a steel company. Still, your affectionate father helps you as you build and sell tricks to professional magicians. One day, your father is removing the lead from a real bullet to make a, a blank for use in a trick. And what happens to your dad? The bullet blew up and uh, went through his head. Right through his cheek there, and later he died of the wound. Did he not? But, uh, before we continue with your career, let's, let's jump forward over the years see you as your father surely dreamed you'd someday be, on stage before a great audience, performing one of your greatest illusions, sewing a lady in half with a buzz saw. There you are. <laughs> Breathtaking. Marvelous. Back now to your young manhood. When you spend the years of your youth developing the incredible dexterity of your hand. And when you're ready, you take your family name, Bhutan. Begin your first stage act, the Bhutan Brothers in Straight and Crooked Magic. And here to surprise you is the beloved partner of your entire career from Poland, Michigan, your brother, Pete Bhutan. Hello, <laughs> In your uh, stage act, two wonderful brothers who really love one another. Throughout the years, they have had some wonderful experiences together. In your uh, stage act together, Harry trained you to become a magician and a clown. Now, once when you were just getting started, uh, Harry built an illusion uh, where you were to disappear in a, in a box on stage and uh, appear again running up the theater aisle. Now, what happened there, Mr. Bouton? Why, in order to get around to the front of the in front of the theater in time, I had to go through the ladies' dressing room. Down the basement. <laughs> Down the basement. <laughs> yes. And then, do, and then out in the alley and to the aisle of the theater. Well, I vaulted the rail, all right, slid down the stairs and fell into a paste barrel. Into a what? Into a paste barrel. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> On my way out, I just started down the aisle. I was stretching the paste off. All, it was all over me. And I just distributed paste all through the aisle. After the show was over, the manager came back and went to charge us six dollars for cleaning up the mess. <laughs> Aside from the fun you both had, you, Harry Blackstone, become one of the most daring performers ever to do the underwater escape act. With your hands manacled and chained, you permit yourself to be nailed into a box, weighted with ice. More than once, it's only your splendid physical strength that saves your life. Thank you, Mr. Pete Bouton of Colon, Michigan. Pete's wife, Millie, is here, too, your wardrobe mistress for 13 years. Here is Pete's wife, Millie. 
There, you're going to see them all right after the show and the party. <laughs> Thank you, Melly and Pete. The skill of your hand in tricks of magic is matched by your original idea. You plan an ever more lavish show. Taking another family name, Blackstone, you set up a workshop in Colon, Michigan, where you create apparatus for new and astonishing illusions. And there in Colon, one night, Harry, you saved my life. Your able assistant for 14 years, whom you haven't seen in 12 years, here from Des Plaines, Illinois, is Ralph Bud Dorema. Here's Bud. <laughs> Mr. Blackstone saved you from drowning, didn't he, Bud Garima? Yes, I was a very young boy in those days. And uh, one night I dove off the pier and got tangled up in the seaweed, and I was blacked out. Very strong. And pulled me on the dock and pumped the water. Here in the 1920s, you remember that. Absolutely. Here in the 1920s, creating the original illusions that are to make you famous, you especially love to work with animals, Mr. Blackstone. And that must have been fun for you, bud, when you were a boy. Very, uh, I think at the time you were working on the vanishing horse and the vanishing camel. Oh, we had lots of animals in those days. We had bulls. There was ducks, there was Russian wolfhounds, there was yeah, 500 a, rabbits. A two lions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And a, uh, a camel, two hump camels, yeah. an Arabian horse. Right. He had a thoroughbred horse. Yeah. He had a shepherd pony. Yeah. He had a burro. Yeah. Had 16 much more pound dogs. Yeah. And 18 white geese. All in one thing. I'll never forget it. We used to take them up the island. We used to mention them off up there for life. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Bud Doremus of Des Plaines, Illinois. <laughs> Mr. Blackstone, you take it easy now. Catch your breath. Back now to your host, Ralph Edwards, and to This Is Your Life, the great showman who became the Ziegfeld of magicians, Harry Blackstone. And to your greatest pick of all, it's 1942 now, one day in Decatur, Illinois, you're giving a matinee show before an audience of 3,000 people, mostly children. Mr. B., in the middle of the show, my husband, Ted Banks, walk up, walked up to you on the stage and whispered quietly in your ear, the voice of a close friend, the widow of your former stage manager, Ted Banks. Here from Colon, Michigan, is Mrs. Sally Banks. Here's Sally. Why did your husband, Ted Banks, uh, walk up to uh, Mr. Blackstone during the show and whisper to him, Ms. Banks? Well, a serious fire had started backstage, and there was great danger. But up to this time, the audience hadn't seen any uh, smoke or flame. And uh, at this moment, Mr. Blackstone showed his greatness. He held up his hand and asked the audience to uh, follow him. He said he had a trick so bad that it could not be done in the theater. Mm. So he said, you will all follow me up the aisle and to the outdoors, and I will show you the greatest trick you have ever seen. Then all those people walked out. Then all of those children and the adults followed him to the outside of the theater. Yes. Without your calmness, many lives might have been lost, Mr. Blackstone. And back in the theater, what happens to your stage manager, Ted Banks, Mr. Blackstone, at that time? Well, the following, he was there, he was the one that came... I didn't show him until his fire chief was coming out to explain this to the people. And the way he said it, I said, let me go out, let me explain it. So I told him about this illusion I was going to perform in the air outside the theater. The club lady couldn't get out of her seat, you so fat. She was seated there brilliant. And my son and another person had to help me get out. So I walked very slowly out the door with it. Just about this time, five buildings were a fire on the other side. Ted Banks was busy... Fighting the fire, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He became completely exhausted, I understand. He was. He went home to lay down, and he never woke up. He died of a heart. Yes. A brave man, Ted Banks, as you were yourself, Mr. Blackstone. And our thanks to you, Mrs. Sally Banks, Mr. Colin <laughs> Me 
Meanwhile, you married Billy Matthews, a woman of energy and talent who helped you rise to the pinnacle of theatrical fame. In 1934, she presents you with a son. Thanks, Dad, for the endless hours of joy that you've given me in telling me of your art and teaching me the wonderful tricks that you've taught me. And yes. to pro prove that I've really learned my lessons, I'm going to do a trick that you taught me. It's your son, a gifted magician in his own right. He's here from Austin, Texas, where he's a very popular newscaster for station KTBC, which carries this program in Austin. Your boy, Harry Blackstone, Jr. Oh. Uh, Harry. Yes. Yes, indeed. As I said, I'm going to show you a trick that you taught me. And uh, as you would say, a bird in a cage, a real, a real canary. I want you to keep your eyes on the bird in cage, and, and it'll disappear right at the tips of my fingers. <laughs> I hope. Skip <laughs> oh. <laughs> off the old block. I was just going to say that. Skip <laughs> off the old block. You travel with your father's show almost all your life except for school years, correct, Harry Jr.? Yes, that's right. And it was a real thrill and a, an honor and a privilege to travel with you. You remember the time, I believe it was in uh, San Diego, when you were doing the levitation, and uh, this is the trick that a young lady floats in midair after she's put asleep. And a fellow out in the audience yelled to you, hey, she's being held up by wires. And in your inimitable fashion, you walked out into the audience and surveyed the scene, looked it over very carefully and said, Oh, no, you can't see those wires. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harry Blackstone, Jr. of Austin, Texas. <laughs> Wonderful boy. For decades, America is enthralled with your magic, Mr. Blackstone, just as we are now, watching you on a film which you do your famous dancing handkerchief illusion. Your company of 30 people is treated by you as if it were your own big, warm family. Here is one of your glorified girl assistants who worked in many of your illusions from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Harriet Connell. Now, Mrs. John C. Luce. Hi. 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 There's Harriet. Mr. B., yours is the art of magic, but it's no mystery why we who worked with you love you. When you had a steak for dinner, we had a steak. And when, some, when somebody wanted to get married, you paid for it, plus a party afterwards. And if somebody needed an overcoat or a suit and they couldn't manage it, you bought it. But best of all was your wonderful warmth, kindness, love, the expression you showed to every single child that ever came up to get one of those wonderful bunnies. Thank you, Mrs. Harriet Lutz of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Nineteen forty-three finds you playing your role in America's war effort, traveling thirty-six thousand miles to one hundred forty-four service camps to entertain our troops. Often you go almost without sleep after doing three or four shows a day to sit up at night as long as one single soldier or sailor in a hospital room needs cheering up. While you carry our GIs into your world of magic, you sometimes encounter at these camps and bases a friend of yours who took those same servicemen into his world of mirth and laughter. He, too, began his career as a magician. Here he is, Charlie McCarthy's employer, Mr. Edgar Bergen. Oh. <laughs> uh, now, Larry, I want to bring you some California roses, but I had a little trouble in my greenhouse. I brought you a rose bush instead. See, I have my gardener. He's, uh, he's not well trained at all. He doesn't speak English. I told him to leave the light lit all night, but he got lit instead. And, uh, <laughs> I went out there this morning, and everything was potted, including my gardener. <laughs> I'm very proud of this rose bush, Ralph. Yes. It blooms in artificial light, and with all the light you have here, I say that bush will bloom in 30 seconds, or I'm no magician. And this could very well be true. <laughs> uh, and if it's a few seconds late, don't, don't panic, because uh, it has a touch of aphis, and I forgot to... Yes, I forgot to spray some aphis on the aphis. That was... <laughs> well, Harry...
Mary, I first met you in 1922. I was an usher at the Victoria Theater in Chicago at Belmont and Chester, and you were doing your wonderful two-hour show there. And uh, I used to sneak backstage and talk to you, and you gave me encouragement and help, so I wanted to be a magician. And as the people walked out of the theater, they all said, how does he do it? How does he do it? So I gave some magic programs, but no one ever asked how I did it. So I gave it up. Well, I tell you, we of the magic fraternity... Say, they did did blue. Look at that. We who like magic, we all love you and respect you, Harry. And we know that the title of great belongs in front of Harry Blackstone. Edgar Bergen, thank you. Say, these are real. I'll take my pot and go. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Edgar Bergen, very much. The year 1947 finds you at the very pinnacle of your career when illness strikes you. Recurring attacks of asthma that force you for a time to abandon the stage and go in search of health to Biloxi, Mississippi. Your earlier marriage had been dissolved some years back. And it was there in Biloxi that you met your present wife, Betsy. And here she is, Mrs. Blackstone. Well, I met Harry 11 years ago when we were in Biloxi, Mississippi at the gay clinic. Remember when we sat and rocked and we talked about our symptoms? We had one great thing in common, the medicine cabinet. <laughs> I thought romance was over, but before very long, his magic worked again. And ours has been a wonderful marriage. No, it has. Magicians are a closely knit fraternity with societies and clubs all over the world. Just as Edgar Bergen and your other friends here tonight look up to you, you too, in your younger days, used to know and admire the late great master of magic, Howard Thurston. Isn't that so, sir? Yes. Howard Thurston had a daughter who often saw an unforgettable sight. Yes, Mr. Blackstone. It was when you visited us many, many times backstage and at our home. Yes, Howard Thurston's daughter, Jane, has come from her home in the Florida Keys. You haven't seen her since she was 17 years old. From Isla Morada, Florida, here is Mrs. Guy Lynn. Jane Thurston. I'll bet things disappeared all over the house when your dad and Mr. Blackstone began trying out these... The liquor disappeared. <laughs> How about that? You look good. Jay? Thank you, sir. So are you. Well, I do have many priceless memories of magic, Mr. Blackstone. And my daddy considered you a great showman and a magician, magician. And you when? Remember, you remember the time on the before I went up? You come down to the theater, and I got some of the boys who went out to your house to lift one. And the phone come, and I answered the phone, and I said, this is Black Snow. She said, who? You want to talk to her, and I answered the phone. Oh, I see. I, you had me confused there with the, uh, uh, what were you saying? <laughs> Jane? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call you that lift one. You're crazy, aren't you? <laughs> yes? Well, I was just going to tell you that when my daddy did pass away, and the mantle of greatness fell from his shoulders. It came naturally to you. And I feel as though he's standing with me tonight in this wonderful tribute to you as today's greatest living magician. Thank you. Those are very nice words. Thank you, Jane Thurston, Mrs. Guy Lee. Come on, everybody. Mr. Blackstone, tonight there'll be a party in your honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where all your family have been staying and friends. You'll have your own film of tonight's program. Here they are, the apple of your eye, your only grandson, Harry Blackstone III, and his mother, Almeda Blackstone, your son's wife from Austin, Texas. There they are. For your new California home, Mr. and Ms. Blackstone, this is your life as commissioned artist David Immerman to paint this portrait of Harry Blackstone III. Here he is. There's the third, and here's Almeda. 75 years of goodness, of wholesome and unique entertainment always giving your best, whether the audience numbered 5,000 or five. You've made your standard the one described by William Shakespeare. If it be magic, let it be an art. This is your life, Harry Blackstone. Good night, sir, and God bless you.
Our guest was flown by TWA.